Hey everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations Live on Friday night, where tonight I'm going to teach you how to make a gorgeous summer beach lantern swag. So not only can it be used to decorate a lantern, which would make a great centerpiece for a summertime barbecue, but you can also remove it off of the lantern swag, use it as a, a table runner centerpiece. You can also use it as a pillar swag. So meaning if you have like a really thin um, pillar com column like we have in our home, it's probably what, how wide do you think that that column is behind you, babe? Would it be like two, maybe a foot and a half, a foot 18 and a half. inches? Yeah, about a foot and a half. Yeah, about 18 inches. So this, like, if you have those spaces in your home where that it's really hard to find something that would fit on there, um, these would be perfect. You can also use this in lieu of a wreath for your front door. So... Um, housekeeping items before we get going. If you want to uh, be notified whenever we have a new video, make sure you click the like and follow button below on this page. Once you do that, just tap on the video right now. You should get three dots in the upper right hand corner. That allows you to click, um, go ahead and tap the three dots. It gives you the option to turn notifications on or turn notifications off. So that should notify you whenever we go live. Also, YouTube people who are catching this live, this is Friday on Facebook. What is today's date? I forget. The I just did my 16th. study. The 16th of 2021. So if you're catching this sometime earlier, can't be earlier. But later than that, um, this will kind of give you a time frame of where we are at on this particular design. Um, if you are new, let us know. We'd like to welcome you and let us know where you're from. Hopefully you'll find a crafting buddy here today. Happy um, Friday. Happy if, Friday. If your brightness seems low, then don't forget to swipe, swipe up. up. Yes, we've learned and all about the contrast or brightness raise levels. Raise your brightness level to at least half. Exactly. Okay, so let me make sure I am up and running. This is a super simple design. I think you'll like this. You can incorporate this design for any holiday, any theme. So um, it's just something that I need to remind myself because once we've done it, like I think the last time I did it was two years ago and I haven't done anything since. So we're going to be um, doing this for, let's see, I think if I'm not mistaken, let me remove the candle in here so I can lay it on its side just so I can give you the ball park of how tall my lantern is. This is an 18 inch lantern. So remember if you're making these and you list it, show it on the lantern, show it off the lantern, show it all the different ways that you can utilize it. I think it's six by six, right? Um, I think so. Yes. Six by six at the bottom. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. They usually have these every other week or every third week. They put their lanterns on sale at 50% off. Um, I usually have like a white lantern and a black lantern and that pretty much gets me through all the um, different types of holidays or themes that you can use this on. So we're gonna be using a lot of um, artificial florals, things that look very beach-esque. So when you're picking out your greenery, you wanna look for things that look like seaweed or sea ferns or things along those natures. You're gonna need ribbon. Um, whatever color theme floral you want, you can pick whites, you can pick ivories, uh, beiges, you can go a brown, you can do gold, you can do, um, I think we're doing teal. It's like two different color teals. Um, we're doing white, a little bit of like a greenish tint, so I'm kind of keeping um, those as my colors. Um, what else? You'll need ribbon for your bows. You'll need zip ties because that's how you're going to secure it all together. If you want to embellish it with um, starfish or seashells, you'll need to have those on hand as well. You can pick those up at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, any of your wholesalers. And for those of you that live by the beach, a lot of your beach souvenir shops will kind of have a big basket full of seashells. Those are great for all of your um, beach themed decor. Yep. I think I got everything. Hi gals, just join in. A lot of them are coming in a bit late. Uh, 
Um, a couple gals said they love the wreath behind you. Oh, my winery wreath. Yeah, I just yeah. finished that one yesterday. Again, so many times we, like, when, as a wreath maker, you design a wreath and then it sells, a lot of times we forget if it sold that quickly, make another one, make a little bit of a different variation on it and um, keep putting that in there because this may be the season where people are looking for those. I also checked Etsy before we came live and there is no beach lantern swag. I think there was one and um, I didn't really like the way that they put that together um, because you would really only be able to use it on a lantern. You wouldn't be able to take it off and use it any other way. So you guys excited to get started? Um, make sure to, if you're listing this on your Etsy shop or your website, that you include a disclaimer that even though it is showcased on a lantern, the lantern is not included in the swag. It's just shown for um, decorative purposes. Okay, so the only thing you're going to need is you're going to grab all of your florals, and I'm going to pull all mine out. So I'm using this stuff which I got from Shinoda, which is a wholesaler out here in um, California. And this kind of is like that sea fern. So this is going to be some of my base that I'm using tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the skew numbers. Now let me, um, normally I actually keep all these ahead of schedule, but I never know when I'm doing florals what I'll actually use or not. So you wanna make sure that you fan this out because it's usually clumped together for storage or just like as they stick it in the, the box. Move these to the side. And then I'm gonna take this and do the same thing, making sure um, I put the edges that I like. And then um, when you're looking at your lantern swag, um, when you have your, the width of your hand is going to be the size of your bow. So you need to have this much area clear when you're adding all of your florals because this will occupy your bow and ribbon space. Um, when you take it and you place it on top of your lantern, you still want to be able to see the other three sides. You don't want it to be so big and so overwhelming that you can't enjoy the um, ambience of the candle on the inside. I also recommend that if you're using a lantern and you're going to incorporate a lantern swag that this becomes a flameless candle, not an actual, because obviously it's going to get hot. You don't want it to, you know, really become more than what it needs to be. So when you're like looking at it from a size perspective, you're going to kind of hold it up here and we're going to be building two thirds of our lantern swag to the top and a third at the bottom. You don't want it to hang to the bottom, just elevated slightly. So right about there is a good um, measurement for this particular swag. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave these on. And I'm gonna add some additional greenery. And this came from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to snip these off, just so we have some little wispies Take about three off of this bunch. And florals should go on sale at Hobby Lobby beginning Monday. So if you like this design um, and want to put something like this together, pick up your floral decor starting Monday when it's 50% off. So I'm just gonna add these two in here and I'm gonna be building this one towards the bottom right about here. We're just gonna blend these in. And then the whole thing is built using zip ties. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and zip tie that, um, I guess it's almost like a fern, like this, the little wispies. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to my um, sea fern at the bottom. Janie, I think it's, it's either Janie or Janie. She's first time joining you live from Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So this actually has no frame at all. It's all just going to be built attaching florals together. 
So we're gonna put these two together. Remember, we need our bow space. Constantly check it to make sure you're not going above and beyond. That's pretty good. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate my large florals, meaning the largest ones that I'm gonna be putting in this design, which are these teal color ranoculus. So I'm gonna put one at the top and two to the side. Yeah, push all your greenery up because that's where everything will be seen. So I'm letting the stems fall. Push these back up. Just like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie these on here to the top of my stem. So I'm just adding these catch using six inch zip, zip ties. ties. You can use the, what is the bigger one? Are they eight? Eight inch. Eight inch. Um, I just wanted to use white with this design. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of bend these. We'll bend more of them as we like finish the design and then you can kind of do your fluff. Um, at the bottom, I'm going to be utilizing, um, you have my phone. So I can't do this. I think this is dogwood. I'm not, not a hundred, hundred, hundred percent sure. But if I had my, there's an app that you can get your phone and it's called What's This? So you take a picture of any floral and it'll tell you exactly what it is. So a lot of times when Hobby Lobby puts things in a bin, they don't necessarily have the label of what it is. And then of course these are probably artificially colored because I don't think they come in this color. And I'm going to be adding this to the bottom, but I want it mixed in here a little bit. But just like so, I'm going to zip tie those two together, keeping this. Is it picture this? Picture. Is it? No. Is it called picture this? Picture this. Identify a flower or leaf. Like that, yeah. Okay, so it is. Picture this. And see, it doesn't state on the, the top of the floor what it is. You want to take a me? picture? Watch, Steve's going to do this for you. Let's see if it does it. You have to get really close so that it takes a picture of the bloom. Did you upload the app? Yeah. Oh. So hold on, we just need to take a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to snap a picture. I did. What does it say? Pacific Dogwood. Dogwood. So we were right. Okay. So it's a really cool app to get for your phone. It's a free app, right, Steve? Yes. Okay. So it's a really nice app to get for your phone. Um, I'm going to make this one a little bit longer just so that this kind of um, adds to the structure of my design. It's a super fun app. I use it all the time when I go to find um, flowers and I'm not sure what the name of the floral that I'm looking at is called. So when I add this. Well, that's one thing you should have said, Kat, you do an amazing job, job teaching, thanks. I love all your designs. Oh, thanks, Rosalind. Okay, I'm just kind of like, you almost want to build it, and then you can, like, mix all your florals. What were you saying, Steve? Melissa, good job. She said, so So she made two wreaths yesterday, so happy the way they came out. So congrats. Congratulations. So I'm just taking these and just adding my zip ties as I add florals to this. Sometimes I'll put two or three in, and then I'll zip tie it again. So I added this little greenish, it's like a greenish with a little bit of a pink hue. And this is Rhinoculus. Again, you can get this at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna be adding this in here to this side. Let's see. And this said, hi from San Diego. Love your work and explaining of everything you do. First time joining. Oh, thank you for joining us. So we're about three hours north of you, Enzo. Okay, so I'm gonna add this one here. I'm going to add a white one 
at the bottom. So I'm just kind of like laying my florals out. So I definitely want to add some white up here to the top. I might add the white at the bottom down here. Okay, I think I'm happy with that one. Let's fill this a little bit. So these are all just ranunculus picks that I have. And I'm liking the way that this is right now. So I'm going to zip tie the top half and then I'll zip tie the whole thing together. So right now, zip tie the top. Trying not to get it right over a zip tie because then it just kind of, it doesn't really hold it where you need it to. And then we'll add this one to this side. And just move anything around. Okay. Go ahead and add this one. It goes together really quick. And then we'll be adding some filler as well. So it's not quite as um, spacey in between. So now I'm going to join these together. just to give it some strength. And then we'll add some more. So I'm gonna do this about three times. Hey, congrats, Michelle Mason. She's at my second craft show this uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Made so many wreaths, she sold 19 at my first one. Congratulations, yeah, see? Okay. Some people just have really awesome luck at craft fairs and it just depends, I guess, on your local, um, local region, yeah. yeah, like we would not do well at a local craft fair here. Um, if we did it more towards the beach communities, yeah, I would definitely think that, you know, we'd have a lot more luck there. So kudos for you that are able to do that. Um, I'm going to add some Queen Anne's lace for our filler. So again, just push your greenery up. This comes from Hobby Lobby. And I like to use the Queen Anne's lace for the filler because it's got that, that's like a delicate balance to it. I'm trying to decide if I want my ranunculus to go around. And you can see how I'm just kind of weaving this in. So you can pull some of your greenery down a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in. I need the, there we go. So we wanna move our greenery out of the way. If you need to pull it down and adjust it, you can definitely do that. So I just kind of weave my floral in. Grab another piece. I'm looking for the ones that are a little bit full. This one's only got one leaf cluster. Go in here. I'm gonna pull this down. And then just blend. Get through their noculus a little bit and we'll cut another piece off, put it on the other side. Smush my blossoms. There we go. Okay. Again, zip tie. And then we'll 
do the same. Okay. Um, let's do one more at the bottom. Push granary up. And then we're going to add this one to this side. There we go. Perfect. Zip tie one more time. And you guys are probably thinking, mm, not really like loving that, or I just don't see kind of how this is going to be. So kind of what we're building is something along these lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, before I go in and add any more floral, I need to mm -hmm. build my bow, and then we can backfill with any additional floral that we need to, so I'm gonna set this aside. Take these bows. So, um, we have quite a few. I pulled out quite a few different designs. I like adding a lot of the natural, so this, open weave. Um, it's like a basket weave, I guess. So I'm going to, let's see, don't want to go too far. I think I'm going to take this down to about 10 inches. And then we're going to fill this in. And on these particular bows, I don't generally measure much because sometimes I like a long tail on one side, short tail on the other, as you're just back filling the bow. So let me make sure, what is this one for loop size? I think it's five and a half inches. Yes. Kara, I think Kara Hagen is in the private group, right? Yes. So Kara, ask that question to Kat on the private group and she'll respond to you. Um, it's a question regarding linking, you know, Facebook page to Etsy. Oh yeah. So yeah, ask her in the, in the private group and she'll respond. Most definitely. Okay, so um, in addition to this, I am going to add, um, let's go ahead and add, some of the seafoam green. This came from Michael's at Christmas. So we'll go ahead and dovetail these. Oops, got to cut off that end. I have a loose wire. So let's just start this one over. Since I was trying so hard to accommodate the little fray at the end. Let's do it this way. Okay, so when you're dovetailing, you are going to fold your ribbon so the wired edges are together. You're going to cut from the folded side all the way to the point, and then that gives you a pretty dovetail. And I think I'm going to do this one at about nine inches. We want a varying length, and we want a pretty big bow. Move those seashells before they fall on the floor. And you'll see that I have quite a few um, inch and a half ribbon added to this design. And then that's so that I can vary um, colors. I can add a bunch of different textures, just kind of like what we've done with the florals. Let's see, these are four and a half, almost five inch loops. Hi, gals, just joining in. Hi, everyone. Hey, Kat, your hair looks different. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, this is called Cat's flat look. It's called didn't really fluff it today, didn't curl it. This blow dried it straight, but thank you. Okay, so we've added that sea foam. Now we'll come back in and we'll add this fun um, like beige and white. I like beige white and keep on green for my beach colors. This came from, was it Sam's? This was the Sam's spring ribbon this year. So I thank Kathy Silvers for picking these up for me. She's nice enough to scoop them all. So we're gonna go ahead and add this. 
So I'm not really looking, like there's no, when you're doing a lantern swipe bow, you kind of want things different lengths. So a lot of times I just eyeball it. So I might go a short one on one side, bigger loop on one side, shorter loop on the other with a longer tail. So I'm gonna pull this one out just a touch. So I'm doing things now more along the lines of what looks pretty. Uh, that seems a little long. I think I'm just gonna take this one down. It's probably, like this one's really long. I love making these. They're so much fun to make and I totally forget that, you know, most people don't think like, wow, I never really thought to do that with a lantern. So this makes for something fun. So let's take this white swirl ribbon. It reminds me of this sea foam. This came from Craft Outlet. I seem to think that Hobby Lobby had this color. So I'm taking this one a little bit longer. Okay, that's where you need to get your ribbons from? Um, okay. Most of them are craft outlet, but um, I have quite the collection. Just like the beach colors, like I gravitate to this color all the time. But this is also one of the hardest colors to match when you're trying to, you know, match this to a sign, match this to a wreath. And you can see I'm not really measuring. I'm not measuring my loop size to see if they're even because you don't want them even. I'm just gonna keep moving everything that side. Um, this gold or like beige and seafoam green, a little bit of glitter. This came from Hobby Lobby at Christmas. So I'm gonna let this one go a little bit longer. A little bit longer, but a little bit shorter on the bow. The loops, actually. Okay. Got my debris pile over there. And we might need to adjust these once we put this on the swag, but I'd rather have them longer than shorter. Uh, this ombre color that goes from a blue to a, like a green came from Burton and Burton, which is a wholesaler. So you're only able to buy from them if you are, if you have a business license or a seller's permit. Kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. A lot of rubbish you get too is from Shinoda Design Center down in Santa Ana. Yeah. They need the same thing you need a a lot of the greenery and the florals I get from Shinoda because I get an opportunity to physically see them, touch mm -hmm. them. Um, and then I can, you know, at that point, you're able to make a really good judgment call of, okay, like when we do the, I'm going to do a tropical grapevine wreath on um, Sunday for the Sunday live. All the floral for that primarily came from Shinoda. And there is a Shinoda down in San Diego, too. There is. But you have to, again, have a business license to shop there. Yeah. Or so it's right there. Yeah. EIN. Yeah, you need an EIN number. Empl what is it? Employment identification number or yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. So let me go and add one more strip of this. You can see I'm building quite the bow. So I'm going to come back in with this and make a short one and then I'll add that lighter sheer, um, what did you call it, seafoam green. It's got a little bit of a silver tinge to it and we'll go short. I'll fix this in a second because it's kind of lifting out of the Depot. Okay. 
Yeah, there's still a lot of gals saying, you're, you look really like dim when I keep going, you know, go to your settings. Raise the brightness. Go to display or brightness. And raise, raise the brightness. Because we, if you're using your phone outside um, or inside, outside. you may not go as bright. And we, they, we forget to do that. Like on mine, yeah, I probably need to yeah. adjust mine. It's pretty dim. But I swear I have all my lights on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bright once you have your brightness at least up halfway. So here's our last one we'll add. I'll keep this one kind of short as well. Probably a three inch. But this one, this one wants to pop back up out. So there we go. It's like being finicky, it just wants to pop out. So that's the way you do it. Put your needle, your wire cutters in there so you can dovetail your ends. Okay, so let's put the bow together. Oh, here we go. Pipe cleaners. So bending it in U just makes it much easier when you go to lift everything out keep everything together. You could use floral wire, but I'm not going to, just because I find it easier as we get older and our hand strength starts to be compromised a bit. Um, it's easier to twist a pipe cleaner than the floral wire. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back over I'm going to go ahead and tie this right to the middle. Um, let me flip it this way. No, I had it the right way. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fluff from here. So we'll try to get to the bottom, the bottom of our stack. There we go. It's over here. So we want to pull your ribbons down, but the tail, the loops are just going to go every which way you want. So it's going to fill up all the space. A little bit of a interruption, but it looks like it's back on now. Okay. Let's just hope it stays that way, right? We just said, oh my, but that's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? It's just weird how it all just kind of comes together. So I'm taking loops and I'm doing loops at the bottom, loops at the top, loops all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect. Does not need to be perfect at all. Welcome, Lisa. She said, yeah, I finally get to watch a live show. First time viewer. Hello from Richmond, Virginia. Welcome. I think Hi, we had Lisa. someone else here from Virginia, didn't we? Yeah. I think. Yep. So you want to really, like, contrary to, like, our other bows where we, like, have, you know, tail, like, loops here, loops here. Or wait a minute. Loops here, loops here, tails on both sides. This one, you really want to break that up and you want to have loops all over the place. To the top, to the bottom. This is Jeannie Corliss from Shenandoah Valley. Virginia. Oh, that's right. Of course, they could be a couple hours apart for each other. I know, right? <laughs> yep. It could be like California. It could be like 12 hours in any one direction. Okay, so now we need to come back in and we need to backfill some of this stuff. So if any of your ribbon seems a little too long, and you want to go ahead and trim it down, you can go ahead and do so, which, um, let me look at some of my ribbon lengths. I like cutting down the ones that don't really have an awful lot of strength, meaning the wire inside of them is not really thick. So I'm going to flip this 
and here's my other one. I'm going to bring this one in. Because if you were doing this as a table, um, what do you call it? Um, table runner, you need them a little bit shorter. So I'm just like looking at ones that I like, making them a little shorter. This is why I said there's no real cut and dry formula for this blend. Let's make this one kind of short on this side. There we go. Let's make this one just a tad shorter. I'm just eyeballing them. So you guys will be like, well, how do you know which ones to cut and which ones to leave long? Just whichever ones you want to cut, whichever ones you want to leave long. Mm -hmm. Open up all these because they're so pretty. Got to pull all my ribbon tails out. Okay, so now we need to backfill a little bit more in here. So... Let's see what else we have. I'm going to try inserting these. There's one. Um, where I got these? Uh, I think I think I just kind of created these from another swag I had. And then remember, a lot of these we can bend and move because remember that we left them static so we can move them down so they're not so stuck in place because flowers are generally not... Let's do this one so it's not getting all squished. That is about to be beautiful on my fireplace. So much I want. Do you have a beach theme beach one? Beach themed house. And we're gonna flip some of these so they are they don't stay in the same spots. Let's tuck this one behind. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing down at the bottom. We're gonna move some of our florals so that these do not become static, meaning they just are laying flat on the table. I'm trying to get my dogwood out. Okay. Okay, let's bring in some more Queen Anne's Lace, because that's a great filler. And then I will secure these one final time. So I'm gonna bring these in, down in here. Or said I had the right lanterns for that? Awesome. This makes for a really gorgeous lantern swag. Okay, I'm looking at these. I'm like, mm, this, it never fails. It's always the one with the price tag. You need to put the price tag on that ugly stance. I don't want to see that. You don't want to push it too far up. I like the fact that we can leave the stems pretty long. How this one looks. I don't want to compress my floral though. There we go. Let's add this one to this side. Couple more zip ties and then we are ready to add it. Oop, would help if my zip tie was the right way. It was upside down. So 
So filler flowers are great for adding just the right little pieces. And then we're gonna add, um, I have a little anchor and we're gonna add some starfish and some seashells in here as well. So let me make sure my extra blooms are all where they need to be. Pull this out. There we go. I'm trying to get my my bow out of the way. The loop. Now you have to re-fluff everything all over again. So I just pull all your bows, all your ribbons back up on top where everything was before. So let's add our embellishments. So I have a really adorable little sea anchor and Shinoda again. So I am going to tie this into my bow. Gene, I just sent you the link for Shinoda. Shinoda Design Center? Yeah. Yeah. You might not be able to find everything because it's pretty, like, they have so much stuff in their store. It would be yeah. an impossibility to list it all. Yeah. The one in Santa Ana is much larger, too, than the one in San Diego. What is it, 165,000 square feet? Yeah. Uh, Jenny, if you're in the Predator group, um, she said if we order a sign from Three Birds Nest, uh, how do we get it so you get it? Don't worry about the credit. Cat doesn't get any credit. I don't. You just need to make sure you put the right discount code in so you get. So you get the discount. So you get the discount. Right. Yeah, I get nothing from them at all. It's just something we've agreed to do to give you guys, um, you know, everybody needs help. So there's our anchor. And um, we're going to add our starfish. Well, that's interesting. What? Rosalind asked, hey, Kat, could you maybe do a succulent centerpiece one night? Uh, no. Cactuses. <laughs> you know what's funny okay. is I need to do a, I have all this stuff to do a succulent wreath. I just haven't done it yet. I haven't made it. Okay. So I am looking. Do you, I want the finger stars in here. I have some small ones. And have some big ones. Lisa, that's a big one. <laughs> What's that? She said, do you ever get overwhelmed with buying items to make the wreath with? In other words, do you ever overbuy because you're nervous you won't see something again you may miss it and end up with overstock? Yeah, you've done that before. A lot. I'm finding cute things and I don't want to buy them so down the road I can make a wreath with it but not sure when down the road is going to be. Exactly. Have a list. Stick to the list. <laughs> Although a lot Stick of women to the don't. list. Yeah, it's like, uh, most of the time we don't. I mean, I try, but it doesn't always work out that way. So I'm just going to add my sea star. What do they call these? We figured this Finger. out. Finger starfish. Finger starfish, yeah. There we go. I had to prime that. So this is actually just one of the fingers is getting glued right to the floral bunch. Oh, Jenny Stewart said also friends are on the way. Got a little congested and didn't get down there till Monday, so you should have them by Thursday. Aw, thanks, Jenny. Okay, you still need to send me all your Venmo stuff as well. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of let that rest inside. And then we're going to add some... We need to add... See, in my... Um, 
my starfish or sea stars. I get them all from Amazon. So Amazon has a ton that you can order and you can buy them. And I saw which ones you pulled out. Those weren't the ones I was looking for. Maybe. I like the zebra. So I'm looking for them. Usually they're always at the bottom. Amber, yeah, for the most part, cat, everything that you see cat make on the lives is usually for sale, either in her website or on Etsy. Ooh, this one's so pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Yeah. So I like that one. We'll add some of these, the really long ones, because I love the color on these. And these get glued in. So, I'm going to fix that. Um, somebody had actually posted a really good question on YouTube the other day, and they asked me, um, like for the floral crosses that we have made this year, they said, how is this possible that, you know, we can take these and use these on grave sites or like stake them in? How will we know if the, um, the glue will stay like if it won't melt, if it if it goes outside. Um, Gorilla Glue, if you set the temperature too high, um, the glue gun temperature is hotter than the weather outside. So if you set it to high, it cures at a higher rate, and then you don't have to worry about whether or not that's gonna come off, um, you know, yeah, while it's sitting outside. Hundreds of degrees in order for this. Yeah, it'll never get that hot. So there's a, a reason why we do that. So I'm just kind of looking at, like I just wanna kind of have these glued in. Just like, I still wanna see them. Well, let's see. This side had a better opportunity for one. Oh, thanks for the info, Tara. You What's said up? the Christmas tree shop has really cheap starfish and sand dollars right now if anybody wants to start Oh, nice. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and do my glue. There we go. So, I'm going to glue this. And I'm going to set this so that the tip of it actually sticks out right here. I just have, I like having little things that you can like discover all throughout the design. So just having just a wide variety of different textures, different shapes. So I'm gluing these right into my florals. So giving them a chance to set up. Same thing. That's why we include the greenery in here. It was interesting because when I was looking at the picture of the one that I made back in, was it 2019, I think. Um, I didn't realize that I had incorporated little seashells here and there throughout the, the, the swag. So I was like, oh, that looks cool. I totally forgot I did that. Okay. Go ahead and tuck one right in here. Just give it some time to set up before I go ahead and pick this up and then um, go ahead and attach the wire. Let me find another one of these really long ones. We'll add this down here. Are they all back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes, this is available right now for sale on my website, which is at catscreationsandmore.com. Also, if you want to um, find this video again, once you have all of your stuff ready and you want, um, you know, you need to find the video again, um, click the share button below. The share button will share it to your your page, it's much easier to find on your page than it is on mine. Um, we're just giving these a little bit more time to set. And then we'll add our wire. And then we should be good.
What do you guys think so far? You guys kind of like it? Do you like the design? I'm gonna add this one. Of course, I add one more seashell to the bottom. I just don't want to burn. There we go. It's just fun finding little, little discoveries, little things you can find in your design. And then if you want to use this as a centerpiece, you would fluff your bow a little bit differently. You'd have the tails come out to either side. And that's the great thing about having this um, wired ribbon is you can readjust it. So for lantern swag, the tails will all be towards the bottom. For a table centerpiece, you're gonna readjust all the tails to come to the outside so that it fully fills all the space in here Okay, let's get my loops in here. We have our lovely anchor. Okay, um, to attach it, you will need 22 gauge floral wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off a pretty good length, pretty good length. I'd rather actually have it longer then shorter. This is probably 24 inches, just about. Okay, let's make sure everything has attached. Nothing's going to fall off. And then um, when you're getting ready to attach it, thing about your lantern, make sure the side you're attaching your lantern swag on, find the door, right? There's always a door on our lantern. So in this case, um, I have my, my candle here and you could like embellish this with, um, you could put a ton, like you could put sand in the bottom and then fill it with seashells to make it very beachy themed. Sea glass, yeah. Yeah, I could add sea glass to that. I would probably go with a little taller pillar. Why don't you, you put this one in here? It looks like a forest. Okay, go with me here. <laughs> We're gonna go a little longer because I like a little bit more volume. So it's a pine tree. Um, you want to make sure that if people are going to be carrying it by the handle, that you don't impact the ability to pick it up by the handle and that the door is free. Okay. So everything on ours is going to go like this. It's going to go from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my wire. We're going to kind of loop it so that I have everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And I'm going to kind of place this. Remember, we don't want it to hang to the bottom. So I'm kind of looking at where does my swag need to be. So I am looking at it. Let me show it to you from the back side. Swag from the back side. Okay. We will. We're looking for it here. So I'm looking for a good length of where we've built this to be able to attach and we don't want it to hit the bottom. So right up here where I have my hand is where I'm gonna go ahead and attach the wire. So we're gonna go ahead and put the wire around here. I'm gonna go a little on the high side. Okay. Give it a really good solid twist, which is why I prefer the 22 gauge wire it's a lot thicker. Okay, we want to make sure all of our floral is to the front. Yeah, this little one down here. And then here's our thing. We are going to take our wire and it's going to go around, I guess you'd call this finial. Mm -hmm. So this is going to try to make sure I'm going to attach the wire. So A, it's going to look like sloppy wire for now because all this is wired, right? Let me just take this off real quick. Show you what we should have done first. I'm hiding on them so good. 
going to bend it. Okay, we're going to put an arc in it. So that now, when we attach it to the top, I get this going. take all of our greenery and everything is going to start bending around so that it's not straight up and down. So, oops, pop this guy back on. So I'm going to loop these down and back. There's this other one. Now you need to backfill all your bows. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange your floral. So when you're rearranging your florals, you're going to do them from side to side. Try to get everything to move because it's all static before. Beautiful. I'm sorry, you guys are looking at the back because <laughs> I'm like trying to do this from the the front and the side. Charlotte, I love watching you tab design your wreath swags. You're great with all the information on how to make such beautiful designs. Oh, thank you. Let's go ahead and pull this brown one up. Let's do brown to the center. I'll use our. There we go. Had to get a good pull. Thanks, Regina. She said that's beautiful. Thank you. Lands are stunning. Give it lots of likes and love. And I'm actually going to readjust one of my picks. It's got a really long end where it doesn't have anything, and I just don't. And I just prefer to. <laughs> um, there we go. Like a little dab of glue. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, all these are just. And they're beautiful. Caddy always did good work. Hey, Tamara. See, this is so beautiful. Love it. Okay. So now we're just placing floral. Love it, really nice to see something different. And then now we want to make sure all of our ribbon, you can have your ribbon curl up, you can have it curl under. If there's anything that seems like it might be a tad too long, feel free to go ahead and trim all those. I have a couple pieces here that I'm not fond of the length. So I'm going to cut this one a little bit shorter. So I can see some of the floral underneath. I'll do the same thing with this one. That's beautiful, babe. Oh, thanks, Steve. I like making them different. Mm -hmm. It's like we used the one that we had from two years ago, the photo, as an idea. But you don't want to do an exact replica of that. Like I try really hard not to, mm -hmm. you know, make any of mine 
an exact replica of something I've done before. Okay. So your excess wire, you would just merely tuck around. Okay, good question. So since the lantern is not included, will you just ship it straight? Um, yes. So you would ship it just the way that I built it, like a centerpiece. And then you would include, you know, here you're going to see wires included. That's the wire you're going to go ahead and wrap around your lantern. So if you've noticed, we kept this design primarily to the first quarter of the lantern. We do have some pieces that are swagging up over, which is why we don't want to do real candle in here because obviously this would start to melt. But um, then you can still access your candle from the inside so that you have a really pretty um, design. Yeah, super simple, right? And then you can embellish it. Like I said, you can put um, more sea stars in. You know, you can just fill it full of stuff from your beach trip. Like I said, I see this on a, um, what do you call it? A picnic table, like mm -hmm. for a summer barbecue. So that you have all of this. Um, you can add more seashells if you want. Like I would probably come back in and add a couple more pieces. Yeah, but with people with homes by the beach too, if you guys have your just posts right off of your porch. You just attach them right to the post too? Yes, you could definitely do that. Like Steve says, you know, this can go right underneath uh, the lantern um, and make sure, you know. So I love all the, the little embellishments that you can add and help keep it fun and very beachy. Adding some more seashells. I'm tucking the seashells in on the back so that those become like this one here. They just become fun little things to find. Like you might not notice them from the front, but as you come around and you look at the rest of the design, you're like, oh, I see, oh, here's one here. So it just becomes beachy without looking totally beachy. So. Very good question. So I have two lanterns on each side of my fireplace. Would you make them the same or would you try to make them be different? Um, same theme, but yeah, same I don't colors. think, yeah, same colors. Like I would do the exact same thing like this and then, um, make them a little bit different. Cause obviously when you're looking at seashells, seashells are not going to all be the same, but you can make them similar, but not a hundred percent, you know, matchy matchy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? I hope you guys yeah. like this design. Um, like I said, you can take this, you can pull it completely off the lantern and keep it straight. You can adjust this like this and have it as a pillar on your wall. You can lay it flat, readjust your ribbon tail so the tails are on both sides of the uh, swag. Mm -hmm. And then you have it as a really nice, gorgeous, floral um, and beachy centerpiece. centerpiece, right? So it's one design three different ways, pretty much. Or you can even use it in lieu of a wreath because mm -hmm. I've had people do it that way as well. So, all right. Any other questions? That's it. All right, guys. Well, have a great weekend. Don't forget to join me back here Sunday at 6 where we're going to be making a tropical grapevine using some gorgeous tropical florals from Shinoda. And have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.